This is Wandering North America. My name is Jeff, and I'm glad you're here. In this episode, I'm gonna introduce you to Colonel Gail Halverston, AKA Wiggly Wings, AKA the Candy Bomber. From 1948 to portion of 1949, Colonel Halverson was a C-54 pilot bringing food in because of the Soviet blockade. Thank you for being here, Colonel Halverson. I was flying foreign transport operations in the Air Force, and that was kind of operation was going to feed the people in Berlin. So I was at the Hill Field, and they called, called me up to go to Berlin right away, grab a few clothes and take off. Well, uh, I knew the, in Berlin, the Berlin kids especially didn't have any candy. They hadn't had any since the b middle of the war. I always carried candy with me for myself, but uh, in Germany, they didn't have any at that time. Because the kids would line up in Berlin at the airport and they welcome us there and give their gratitude for bring in what they had to have for having any dinner that night. And they, the, the gratitude is amazing. And so uh, I, when I first met him, first trip into Berlin, I had a, a whole package of Wrigley's Double Mint Gum. And I said, pull that out, and boy, they just crowded up. And I broke it up in thirds and passed it as far as it went. And then I, at the end, saw the disappointment in the eyes of the children. They asked for a piece of the wrapper. And the kids that got the part, part of the stick of gum, they gave the wrapper, tore it up in pieces and gave it to them. And I saw that, I said, boy, I gotta do more. So I told the rest of them, says, come back here. I don't, I'll be, make three trips in Berlin in 24 hours. And I don't, some of that'll be at night, but if you come by in the daytime and wave, and I'll drop you enough ch chocolate or gum for all of you. No, they went crazy. And I had a ration card. I couldn't buy all the chocolate I wanted. So I had, we had military, had a ration card for candy bars for heck's sake. So I went to my two crew members, the co pilot and the flight engineer, they gave me your ration card. What are you gonna do, buy a camera on the black market? I could have with a few, a few ration cars. I said, no, that's what I'm gonna do. I said, you got permission? No, well you're supposed to have permission from the Air Force when you drop stuff out of airplane. I said, this is a standard operation. I promised the kids I'd drop it on the next flight in. This afternoon I'm gonna do it. Give me your ration. So. They gave me the ration card, and I was able to buy quite a few candy, enough for each one to have one at least, and a few, few, few left over. So I thought, well, that's pretty heavy. Him and having that going 120 miles an hour, make the wrong impression. So I go back to the school days and tying rocks on handkerchiefs and throw them out the top window. So I had a lot of handkerchiefs, and so I tied the Hanks on three, three Hanks were overloaded, but slowed down so they could catch it. And uh, went, went back in the, uh, that afternoon, and those kids were out there. They told some of their buddies. They were waiting and waving all the airplanes. But when I wiggled the wings, boy, they went crazy. Jumped up and down. And when came over first and wiggled the wings, then turned right around and come back and land. And, uh, so they, they were lined up right on the end of the runway, uh, off the base, of course, <coughs> and uh, we the wings over the airport, and they just celebrated like crazy. And so I <coughs> sent uh, Del Nielsen back and said, uh, I'll tell you, I'll ring the bell, I could ring the bell in the back, I'll ring the bell once, to get ready and then uh, twice to drop it. And uh, so he went back, crew chief, of course, had two pilots flying the airplane. And uh, <clears throat> came over the kids in the room, hit the buzzers, uh, 
three times and, and I couldn't see what happened. But uh, my taxi had out to unload it, taxi to the unloading place. I could see the kids on the end of the runway taking off the covers and stuff and just going crazy. So we hit them okay. And that started the thing. They appreciated so much. I got letters like mad. And I did it three times before I got caught. And Colonel Hahn called me in, Alverson, what are you doing over at the airport when you come in to land? I said, wiggling the wings, sir. He said, what are you doing that for? I said, well, I've been dropping candy bars to kids. Yeah, I heard about that. Well, it's made the headlines of the German paper. The kids are getting candy bars in the United States from airplanes just before they land. You can keep doing, but keep me informed, okay? You're supposed to have permission first. I said, I know, sir. And he says, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Keep me informed. Well, Colonel, when you got caught, is that when Wiggly Wings turned into Operation Little Vittles? Well, it was always Operation Little Vittles. But uh, when the uh, German paper heard about it and camped on the end of the runway, and it's on the head headlines, there's Berlin paper. Chocolate bars for kids in Berlin. And the, the newspaper saved my neck or I got court martial probably. So I, it, I was very grateful for the German press and support. Well, it sounds like the operation had a positive effect on morale in oh, Berlin. It was, uh, it was based on the German newspapers. So it was a major uh, factor in uh, generate hope. And doing it with chocolate bars for heck's sake, when getting dried eggs and dried potatoes, it uh, made, made a real hit with the kids and the government. What was the reaction in the United States? Oh, it was incredible. The New York Times carried it, went on to a press, came out to Utah, of course, where my folks were, and uh, got a letter from them one day and said, wow, what are you doing over there? And so it was uh, something they didn't have, and, and then an emergency like being cut off from food supply. So I, Tell me about Christmas 1948. Well, Christmas came around and <coughs> knew that you wanted to do something special for the kids for, for Christmas. And so I got all my buddies involved. And uh, <coughs> I had a map, a master map of Berlin and where to drop it. <coughs> so I'd, uh, I'd, told, I'd tell the uh, pilot buddies, here's the map, here's where you're supposed to drop it. And we're gonna cover the area. It's like on Christmas time, kids don't have any. Uh, so here's where, here's where you're supposed to drop it. And I had a map for all the guys taking off. And I got full support from the colonel in charge of my operation. The buddies did it, and we had a big map in operations where it dropped the, the uh, where each dropped the last last batch, and we spread it all over the city. And well, we dropped Colonel? over two tons of chocolate bars. Wow. Well, it, it, it was a great experience. Kids were writing letters, walking to school today, and clouds were very low. And, rain a little bit, and suddenly out of the cloud came a whole flock of anxious of parachutes with candy bars on it. You can imagine the scramble that took place. I sure appreciate that. Well, the letters from the kids were a motivator to keep going. And I, <clears throat> I'd share those letters with the Colonel Cassidy, our commander of the airlift. And I'd flown for him in, the, in Mobile, Alabama, before the airlift started. So I, he, I, we knew each other well, and he supported me 100%. Well, the, the people that uh, do you meet today, or the past 30 years, that found your candy, yeah. what did they say to you? Well, say very many thanks for the chocolates that, uh, that you dropped through the clouds, land at my feet, little parachute. And several of them happened to be a birthday. Of course, I dropped it for months. 
And uh, candy companies in America says, how much of this stuff do you want and where do you want to send it? So we got great support from all the candy companies. And uh, we had the women, <coughs> some of the, quite a few civilian women there with, with uh, the husband in the military. And they had a, a program set up to tie up the parachute. We had parachute tying uh, parties and, and all over the base. And, uh, women uh, in, the, in the club in the, in the United States, women's club, my gosh, they tied up more than I did. So it, it, it was a support operation. Well, thank you for your time, Colonel. I appreciate it. In the end, a simple act of kindness for a few children turned into a source of hope for the Berlin people. In the process, it cemented kindness as a trademark of the American soldier and probably went a long way toward dispelling Hitler's propaganda from the years before. Colonel Halverson has written a book on his exploits. You'll find a link below. My name is Jeff. This has been Wandering North America. I thank you for your time. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this episode. I've enjoyed making it. Leave a comment below. If you could make a comment to Colonel Haverson, what would you say to him? Hit the like button, hopefully hit the subscribe and the bell afterward. Let me know what you think. Thank you for your time.